Hello, I'm David Chastain with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news. It's emerging that China is being seriously hobbled. China's exports tumbled 17% in February from a year earlier in US dollar terms to $292 billion, a sharp reversal from December's 8% rise. Imports declined 4% to $300 billion, down from the previous month's gain of 16%. That resulted in a rare merchandise trade deficit, even if it was minor. The sharp impacts of the coronavirus are doing what the trade war initiated by the Americans couldn't do, slow down their exporting prowess. And Chinese bankruptcies are starting to emerge and bad loans are piling up. It will only get worse, even if the virus emergency there is topping out. All eyes are now on domestic Chinese demand levels. A sharp fall will trigger another economic shock. In Australia, retail sales will weaken January, weaker than expected, dropping to a gain of just 2.1% of the slowest January year-on-year -year gain since 2005. The slowdown is concentrated in January, which actually shrank, all due to bushfire and drought effects. None of this January decline is yet due to the coronavirus. And Australia is working on an economic stimulus package to avoid its first recession in almost 30 years. In the US, consumer debt grew far slower in January than was expected. It was up just $12 billion in the month to a record $4.2 trillion, an increment well below the December $21 billion and lower than the monthly average for the past year of $15 billion. It might be a sign American consumers don't think now's the time to raise their debt leverage. And U.S. non-farm payrolls rose by 273,000 in February, and that was more than expected. But this data was collected in surveys in the first half of February and so precede the sharp bite of the coronavirus fear effects outside China. And Wall Street was gripped with fear again on Friday. Even the strong US US jobs report failed to ease the mood. Equity indexes started negatively and ended down 1.7% on the day. The S&P 500 ended the week having been unable on three occasions to sustain any rally. And bond markets are showing even more fear. Many commodities are weak, even though gold is firmer. Public bailout programs haven't been announced yet, even though many investors thought they would be by now. Now the worry is, when they come, will they be inadequate? And the New York Fed's overnight repo purchase activity is now at levels only seen during the 9-11 emergency and were at record high on Friday. This level of support indicates the authorities are having real trouble maintaining market liquidity. And the most spectacular move over the weekend has been the extreme risk aversion shown in the bond market. Demand is rocketing for the safety of government benchmark bonds. US Treasury 10-year yield is now just under 0.77%, which is a very sharp 15 basis points drop from the previous record low of 0.92% on Friday, and a stunning 35 basis points dump from this time last week. And gold has risen to be now at $1,673 an ounce, a gain of $5. That means it jumped $101 in the past week, a rise in that time of 6.4%. And US oil prices are sharply lower, at just over $41 a barrel, down more than $4 a barrel. And the Brent benchmark is also lower, at just over $45 a barrel. And a long-standing informal deal between OPEC and Russia has collapsed after Moscow refused to support deeper cuts to cope with the sharp demand drop. And then OPEC retaliated by removing all limits on its own production. Apparently Russia is trying to knock out the US shale industry with low prices. If they succeed, junk bonds will also be a casualty. And the Kiwi dollar will start the week sharply higher, mainly on the sliding greenback, at 63.6 US cents, up more than one and a half cents in a week. On the cross rates, we're little changed in the week at 95.6 Australian cents against the euro. We're also a little changed at 56.3 euro cents. That means our trade weighted index is now at 68.4 and a minor gain. And Bitcoin has fallen hard this morning, down 8.8% from where we left it on Saturday. It is now just on $82. Most of the fall has happened in the last few hours. And other cryptos have fallen even harder. I'm David Chaston, and that was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.